The Honest Money Podcast is brought to you by Prescient Investment Management. We consider everything to give you the advantage. It's the future of investing. Prescient Investment Management is an authorized FSP. Welcome to Honest Money. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be joined again by one of, one of Honest Money's favorite guests, Rupert Hare. He's head of multi-asset at Prescient Investment Management. Uh, w- welcome, Rupert. Thanks so much for making the time to join us again. Yeah, thanks so much, Warren. Always, always a pleasure to be here. So we're talking about, um, we, we, we rarely talk about product, actually, in, in, in Honest Money. We, we focus on education and, and the like. But I think the, the one product that probably would feature in most people's lives in one form or another would be the classic balanced uh, balanced fund, whether it's a balanced unit trust, a balanced portfolio, if it's in a retirement vehicle, et cetera. But, but we're talking about balanced funds. And the reason that it would feature in most of our lives in one form or another is that uh, it, it's usually the core holding of most large retirement funds. So, you know, if you work for a very big business uh, and you've got a company retirement fund, it's very likely that it looks like a balanced fund. It might even be a selection of balanced funds. And when when people do retirement planning for, for retirees, very often uh, the, the, the bulk or, or a significant portion of their money would be invested in balanced portfolios or, or balanced funds. So long story short, these things are very valuable, number one, but number two, very important in our lives. And I think, uh, uh, you know, you know when before, before we started the recording, Rupert mentioned that we've probably discussed this in, in one form or another before, but, but I think it's a, a critical point is, is to understand them, to understand why they're important and, and, and to go through. So uh, there, there isn't uh, uh, some, someone I know better that will actually talk to me than, than Rupert to help us with, uh, with this understanding. So, so that's the topic, Rupert. Thanks so much for, for making the time. And I thought yeah. maybe let's just kick off uh, w- with uh, what is it? Why? Like, why does this thing work? Why, why do we have it in our portfolio? Yeah, so it depends on the person, the investor. Um, but I guess for the most part, as you mentioned, a lot of investors, so probably the, 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 the bulk of investors um, around our industry in particular in South Africa, will have balanced funds as a core within a portfolio. And why is that? Well, they have got a little bit of everything in them. Um, so you've got access to different asset classes, um, equities, bonds, property, onshore, offshore, and they're really designed to try and maximize your probability of hitting things like retirement goals. So generally, you'll have um, balanced funds in retirement type products. They are generally Reg 28 compliant, which means that they are allowable within um, your pension fund and, um, and then designed exactly for that. So they're exa- designed to provide you with a stable journey um, into retirement. Okay. So, um... So, so we look at uh, you know something that gives us proper diversification. That's the point. It's got it's got these underlying investments that are that are not just exposed just to cash or just to bonds, uh, just to uh, listed property. It's and and equity. It's got a mix of everything. Uh, I, I guess one one comment there, Rupert, is that uh, when when you're in the unit trust world and you say a balanced fund, it also means something from the point of view that. There is going to be a range. There's going to be a, uh, the minimum amount that someone could invest in a balanced fund to shares, and a maximum, and and then the same across all the all the other asset classes as well. And I think uh, for for me that's a that's an important point because it also tells you the the kind of uh, a potential downside, I guess, when 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 you're investing in a balanced fund, it means you've got a, a significant exposure to local and global stock markets, which I think is the absolutely right thing to do for the you know for any decade. It doesn't matter which decade, but for any long-term investor, you you should have a high exposure to shares. But it also tells you that over a three, six, twelve-month period, if stock markets go down and they can halve, um, and you've got a, a balanced fund. It means there's a good chance that your balance fund is down 10 to 20 percent uh, over a few months. It's not to say that your money's lost. I think that's the key point here. Uh, it should recover, but but you should be ready for that. That it's it's going to give you good growth over a decade. It's also going to give you a roller coaster ride where you're going to open your statement one day and see your investment down, and that's normal. 
you know, if, if we did a podcast about that in the middle of all of, uh, of a big stock market crash, you know, you and I'd be sitting here saying, don't do anything. You're in a balanced fund. It's the right thing. Just keep going. Uh, fair assessment? Well, let me just, I mean, uh, one, one revision there. I wouldn't call it a roller coaster. Let's call it a boring roller coaster. There's going to be a bit of ups and downs. But, you know, if you're directly in the equity market and if you're in the equity market in, let's say, very small stocks, illiquid stocks in uh, crazy markets, then yes, that's a serious roller coaster. But my job in creating balanced funds is to smooth out that roller coaster journey as best as I can. And um, that's important for someone who's both pre and post retirement, because you may be contributing or you may be withdrawing from that balanced fund on a continuous basis. So think about it if you're withdrawing, for example, um, you could be withdrawing at the bottom of that roller coaster journey, which means that you're getting less money out uh, in a particular month. Uh, likewise, when you're contributing, you could be at the very top of that roller coaster, which means that you experience immediately thereafter a big dip. So we're trying to smooth out that journey. And, and to do that, really, the idea behind a balanced fund is to maintain a balance. I mean, if you were to have one asset class, let's say equities, you have what I would think would be, and sorry for those that run pure equity funds, but for the purposes of this conversation, it's an imbalanced fund, right? And then you could argue the same thing on, on a cash or money market or, or income fund. It's an imbalanced fund, but sometimes you want an imbalance. So at the early stages of a career, you want massive growth profiles. You don't have to draw down from a, from a portfolio. And then perhaps you want to go in, into equities. At the late stages, when you're withdrawing from your portfolio, then an income fund is a fantastic opportunity because you reduce the volatility. But somewhere in between comes balance funds. And that's where we try and com combine the best cocktail of different asset classes for the smoothest journey uh, for the investor. So, uh, I, I mean, I, I guess it's a, a, a fair point uh, that uh, that, uh, that the, the roller coaster is limited. But I guess for a lot of people who are relatively new to investing, whether you're a retiree and it's you know you've never worried about actually investing before, you've just been saving, and all of a sudden you're a professional investor now because you're living off your your retirement money, uh, or or people new to to investing, um, you know, understanding that if you want your capital to grow faster than inflation you need to be prepared that it doesn't go up in a very nice straight line. It will go up and down. Uh, and, and if you looked at it at, at, almost as a graph, that, that it will look like, um, like sort of a, a saw blade. It will go up and down. But, but generally, from, from over longer periods of time, it will be going uh, up in a, in, a, in, a, in a good direction. And, and so understanding that, you know, that uh, I'm still going to call it roller coaster, uh, Rupert. I'm, I'm stubborn there, uh, but but that that short term roller coaster ride is is the necessary, and it's not necessarily big pain, but it is necessary pain to to beat inflation to to get that capital growth. And and so I, I agree with you that the the, the skill for a, for a fund manager would be how do I get that combination of the assets right so that the the down is as small as possible and the up is as high as possible, but. Uh, but, but me as the as the eternal critic will will tell everybody that there will always be downs and if there is never a down uh, you're probably in a pyramid scheme uh, and you're probably in a Ponzi yeah. scheme yeah. If, if, you, if you're beating inflation as your goal it has to go down and that's okay like it's it's that's normal uh, it, it's a necessary thing to to know that you're in the right kind of investment yeah 100 percent right and i think just to be to be a humble investor to be a humble portfolio manager for me is is so important and what i mean by that is there are so many things outside of my control i wish i could control the u.s elections but unfortunately i cannot so that is a short-term outcome where uh, the market might react to let's say uh president re secondary president or what, the 47th president, uh, Donald Trump, uh, in, in control of the United States again. But really what we try and do within balanced funds is to focus on the medium to long term. So what do I mean by that? I mean sort of uh, three, four, five years and beyond. So if you're going to be the type of investor that opens the, the statement every week and worries about those ups and downs on your saw blade, you know, that's going to cause you unnecessary stress. What you should be looking at is whether the fund is giving you what you need, that being a proper inflation beating return over the longer term and longer term being, let's say, five years and beyond. And that's where you're trying to plan and save for retirement or post retirement. You will be planning and saving for 
um, your holiday overseas or whatever it might be. But it's a longer term fund and you get shorter term funds and you get extremely long term funds. But the key here is that it's balanced. So, for example, within the portfolios that I manage, let's go through some numbers here. Always love big numbers. We invest in over 20 different markets. We invest in over 5,000 different stocks and we invest in over 20,000 different fixed income issuances. So we try and keep a balance so that we don't have concentration. And, and by way of example there, if we were 100% concentrated in South Africa, no matter how bullish I might be on South Africa, and right now I'm pretty bullish on South Africa, but things can go wrong. We know that. The GNU can fall apart. Um, touch wood that it doesn't, but it can. And that's why you need to diversify portfolios, especially in retirement products. Yeah, I think it's a, a, I mean, I mean, I think it's a powerful point around, uh, you know, understanding that you could have a view uh, about the world and, and uh, over a decade, your view might be right, but over a year, your view could be completely wrong just because events don't pan out exactly on schedule. And so, you, you know, having that humility, which, which is, uh, I'll say is rare in fund managers. So well done, Rupert. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, having the humility to know that actually, very often your, your, your views will pan out over time. Uh, they, they don't necessarily pan out when you'd like them to, uh, you know, over a short period of time is key. And, and that's where the, the balance comes in. And, and so I, I won't put words in your mouth, but, but when I look at balanced funds, uh, you know, as a selection and I look at their returns over uh, meaningful periods, in other words, you know, five years, but, but definitely 10 years for me is, is always a good indicator. I, I would expect that a, that a decent balanced fund is delivering a return in a range of about let's say nine to eleven percent a year, uh, and and that's no guarantee. It's it's uh, as I said at the start, it's going to be sometimes much higher and sometimes much lower. But but when people are doing a projection uh, and and they they've got a decade or or two to to kind of put a number in their growth profiles, then then I think that that's a fair assumption. So so I'm not going to ask you to comment on that, but I think what 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 is valuable to know about that is. If inflation is running at six percent, and and uh, we'll all argue about our, our own personal cost of living uh, rate of change, but let's just say it's six percent, it means that you're you you're expecting your capital to grow faster than your cost of living is rising, and and that's the key here. So if you're drawing money, if you are retired, uh, and and you're drawing from your your portfolio, and it's uh, and and you can draw let's say five percent a year. And uh, and your cost of living is going up at six. That's pretty much the profile of a of a balanced fund over over a decade or or two, uh, and and that's the power of of firstly the long term, secondly the the the, the asset mix, uh, and and so you know understanding that 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 it is a very useful uh, planning tool for people that are building so accumulating capital and then those that are that 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 are drawing money. But but I think we need to. Uh, Talk about the dreaded T word, uh, uh, Rupert, uh, around the, the the taxes. You know, uh, love, people love putting their money into kind of a fixed deposit or a money market account because it never goes down. Uh, and my immediate comment after that is, you're absolutely right. Uh, but, but just look at the tax that you pay. And and so, uh, you know, tax is the the great destroyer of of personal portfolios if you don't focus on it and you don't pay attention. We all have to pay tax, but you know, you want you want to do it within reason. And and so maybe just to understand what's the tax implications of, of a balanced uh, fund. Generally, within fund wrappers, and and when you invest in a fund as opposed to going directly into the market and. Uh, depends on the, the different structures that you're investing in or via. But let's give you an example. If I'm a discretionary investor and I'm investing into a fund or a stock or a bond, if I need to sell down that stock, so say you invest in Tesla or NVIDIA or whatever it might be, and you need to sell down that stock to rebalance your portfolio and you're outside of a fund, then you're going to be realizing tax. Now, tax, as you say, you have to pay tax at some stage, but the better time to pay tax is as late as possible. Because you get that CPI plus profile, um, you've got a, a higher base to accrue that from. So within a fund wrapper, um, you don't realize the tax when a portfolio manager like myself is selling down equities to buy bonds. You do realize some of the tax, so there's a pass through on, on incomes, but you don't realize the, the capital gains. And, and that's really the, the biggest uh, benefit, or one of the biggest benefits um, of investing in a fund because it allows myself as a portfolio manager to make those decisions without fear or favor. Um, and then for you as an investor 
to also not have any fear, hopefully, um, or minimize the fear of paying your taxes up front and to, uh, to push it all the way to the back so that you have a much higher capital base to enjoy living off of. And, and I think maybe the other comment there is that the, the mix of assets in a balanced fund, because there will generally be a higher allocation to shares, it means that the, the, the ultimate interest that, that someone in a fund, a balanced fund would pay, will, will be relatively low because the, their, their interest income will be generated from, from the cash. There, there will be cash in a balanced fund. There will be some, uh, some bond ex exposure, which means that your bonds are paying interest as well. And potentially, if there is a property fund, you might earn some taxable rent in the fund. All of that then gets uh, accumulated uh, and and there is a distribution from the the the, the fund to to the in investor where where you will pay some some interest or, or so, sorry some income tax but it should be fairly low mm -hmm. uh, and and I think that that's the key in, in in a situation like this is where you're getting distributions those distributions are quite efficient uh, from an income point of view and definitely over time they, the distributions also grow and it's one of the things that I think people uh, don't always focus on is that funds do pay out uh, you know an income the, the bulk of what you're expecting from from a balanced fund is capital growth so so the income is not the main focus but over a 20 year period it's interesting for me to note that how, how that income actually rises and and certainly you know when you look at it relative to inflation it's a it's a meaningful number yeah definitely um so it's a mix uh, again it's it's a balance of of um taxing during the funds investments although you want to minimize that as much as possible so you do get some incomes um and then taxing right at the end um by selling down the fund itself yeah, and and the, and the real benefit there is if you if it's not in a in a retirement fund and you're and you're paying a tax on the growth, you're you're generally paying capital gains tax. And even if you're a really big taxpayer, that means you're paying around eighteen percent on on capital gains as opposed to forty five percent on on income tax. Uh, and and as I said at the start, you really want to pay the least amount of tax you have to. And and so eighteen for me sounds a lot better than than 45 with my simple mass. So, so I mean, I must say, um, it, you, know, you know, I said it at the start, I think it's a core holding for, for a lot of people, uh, you know, in, in South Africa and, and certainly worth, worth focus on. And, and I take your point as well, Rupert, if you're 25 and you've got no debt and, and, and uh, no dependents, et cetera, possibly you, you want to go with a higher allocation to shares. You, you might have a, a maximum allocation to local and global markets, but, but as people get a little older, uh, you know, having that that spread is just, uh, I think, a phenomenal benefit in, in terms of smoothing the ride of of, of market volatility, uh, and that has a huge psychological impact on us. You know, so the more we can, the more we can stay invested and not panic, the, the better for us. And and you know, and, and I know it's been a, a specific focus for the show, but I just think it's it's worth you know saying to you, listener. Uh, th this is the thing. This is the thing that you will have in your retirement funds, and be happy with it. You know, m make sure it's the correct one, and the, the fees are reasonable. But, but, but it's a, it, it should be a core holding for for decades to come. Yeah, and you hit the nail on the head there in the last point. I think um, there are a lot of balanced funds in South Africa. In fact, within the high equity space, which is the most popular, there are two hundred and twenty. So you have a lot of them to pick from. And and one of the keys for us, at least, is try to minimize those fees because if you're paying a full fee load of three, four, five percent, which some people do. You mentioned earlier that you're getting inflation plus four or five percent. That erodes very quickly. So you can access funds at, at very, very efficient fees. Um, and that's just to another point uh, that I thought of, of earlier. So if you're a direct investor and you want to buy and sell shares, you pay significant costs to buy and sell those shares. Unfortunately, it's diseconomies um, of the small scale. So for us, we pay very little in trading within this fund. And most importantly, you pay nothing for buying and selling this fund. So on the way out and on the way in, you don't pay a cent. So that's, that's really important for us to pass that on to you. Um, you don't have to worry at all about uh, selling a stock because you're going to be paying, let's say, 50 basis points or half a percent to a broker, for example. Yeah, and I think it's a it's often a, a point people miss. You know, they 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 feel in control of their money because they're buying their individual shares and they see the the pro profit go up, and then they're really disappointed when they look at the cash that they put in their bank account after selling because actually they they lost a fair amount in in costs, especially if they do that relatively frequently. And uh, you know, the, yeah. the, the sort of uh, high high frequency trading of, of people, uh, you know, one, one thing it does is it makes brokers very rich. 
so, so just be careful there with your with your costs. The costs are, are so subtle, some of them, and, and I think Rupert makes a great point there. You know, buying and selling the fund, uh, you, you know, you don't pay transaction charges there, and it, it's a, it, it, you know you you be aware of your tax on your gains, but that's not a a, a trading cost. Uh, R Rupert, we're we're, uh, we're we're running out of time, and I wanted to, to give you the opportunity just to to wrap up if you had uh, if you had any final words of wisdom for us on 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 balanced funds. Yeah, so I think we've covered quite a few points, um, but just to go back to the point of diversification, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I'll I'll admit that I, I mean my in my investment career I, I have uh, made that that mistake at times. Um, Earlier on in my investment career, I thought I was the king of the markets and why didn't I just do this? Why didn't everyone just do this? And you're making massive returns. But unfortunately, a lot of things are out of your control and, and it can be political. It can be um, company specific. It can be a lot of things. And they really are out of your control. We call them exogenous risks. And the way to avoid them as best as possible is to just diversify your portfolios. So multiple asset classes, multiple geographies, no matter how good South Africa looks, no matter how good America looks, you don't want to put all your eggs into any of those baskets because we do go wrong. We have to be humble investment managers. And I'm a professional investment manager, and I'll say that I don't get things right all the time. In fact, if an investment manager gets things right more than 50% of the time, you're winning. So that's that's what we're aiming for. Um, and, and, and just a la last point that you'll probably never hear from an investment manager about the stocks that lost. Um, but I promise you that there are a lot of stocks that do lose in portfolios. And just to back Warren's point earlier, that just means that you shouldn't focus on the shorter term. It's going to cause you gray hairs. Rather focus on, on the three, five, 10 year outcomes and try and design your portfolios just like that. Uh, uh, I remember a quote from one of the the kind of all time great investors was Sir John Templeton, and I think he said he, he calculated at the end of his very long career that uh, that as a very successful investor he made the correct decision fifty one percent of the time. Uh, and, That's and exactly so, it. You know, uh, you know, 50-50 benchmark sounds sounds like just passing when you're writing exams at, at school, but but 50% plus <laughs> re, uh, decision making and as a fund manager means means you're doing very well. R Rupert Hare, head of multi asset at Precent Investment Management, thanks so much for joining us. I, as always, lo love these conversations, and and I know our listeners do as well. Uh, and it was great to chat to you. Yeah, thanks as always for having me on. The Honest Money Podcast is brought to you by Prescient Investment Management. We consider everything to give you the advantage. It's the future of investing. Prescient Investment Management is an authorized FSP.